Well, I have another story for you today. Uh, I remember so well when Betty and I and the children loaded up in an old Suburban, and we headed across the country from Georgia all the way to Querétaro, Mexico. We had to get to San Antonio, Houston, and turn south to go to San Antonio. And I was so excited. I was singing the top of my lungs. I was excited to be thinking about the privilege of getting to Mexico <clears throat> and learning Spanish. And Betty was like, honey, you are so cheerful. You're so excited. And I was like, well, you know, it's a, this is the thrill of my life. But when we got to Houston and the car turned south, we started driving towards Mexico. I got real quiet. I, to be blunt honest with you, I was terrified. Um, missionaries had told the stories of how many overseas and Mexico and other countries, how dangerous it was. And all of a sudden, that was weighing on my mind and weighing on my heart. And I was thinking to myself, what's going to happen to us? How am I going to take care of my family? We arrived down right on the border. I, I guess it's Laredo. No, it's further south than that. It was right on the border and uh, going, in, uh, going into Mexico. We went by Sanborns Inn Church, and they gave us a book. You could turn the pages, and it took you all the way through. Here's places to stop to eat. Here's places uh, uh, to buy gas. And uh, uh, don't get off the road. And told you everything to do. And so as we're riding along, uh, I'm so excited, but now I'm not. I'm terrified. I was under the impression from what I'd been told, man, it wouldn't even be safe to drink the, the Coca-Colas that they serve down in Mexico and that uh, I could be riding along at 80 miles an hour and thieves could get on my car and steal my windshield. Now, I know that's all an exaggeration, but the, the fears that kept reverberating through my mind as I, as I thought through that and, and all the things that were just hitting me hard all the time, uh, it was unreal. It was unreal to think about what might be going to happen. But I had to keep a cheerful face because I needed Betty to be excited and I needed the kids to be excited and I, I needed this to go well. And so as we were traveling along and talking and and all, uh, uh, I said, look, we're going to go on into Mexico and we'll drive all the way to Mont Monterrey, Monterrey, Mexico. We'll spend the night down in Monterrey, Mexico. And Betty said, well, it's Wednesday. Are you planning on going to church? I said, well, of course I am. I'm a missionary. You think I'd miss going to church on a Wednesday night, my first night on the real mission field? And uh, she said, well, how are we going to go to church? I said, oh, don't be stupid now, baby. I'll open the yellow pages and I'll look up church and I'll find a church. Now, I didn't know. We got, she did. She knew so much more than I did. It was amazing. We arrived at, uh, I think it's a Ramada Inn or a Holiday Inn. And I was terrified. And so... We got in the room. She said, well, where are we going to church? I said, give me that yellow pages. I opened the yellow pages, and I looked under C, and, you know, church starts with an I in Spanish, and it's not under the letter C. And I was, uh, I mean, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what we're going to do here. And and then I parked the car in a, in a closed-in gar uh, garage that they had, not a garage, but a parking lot, and I had the car parked right outside my window so I could watch it all night long make sure nobody stole from me. Woke up all night long, every hour or two, just to check and make sure my vehicle was still there and all the junk was in it. I'm telling you that fear will make you do some weird and crazy things. But anyway, I didn't know any better. And I learned later, everything I'd been taught, everything I'd heard was not true. And Mexicans are the most wonderful and friendly people, and I had a blast. Next morning, we got up, and we got up pretty early, and we got the four kids loaded up in the car, and the car is brim to brim full of junk that we're going to live with for the next year. We started driving, and all of a sudden, a policeman started frantically pointing at me and telling me to pull over to the side. I, I, I mean, I knew that because of the signals he's given me, and, and uh, so I pulled over to the side, and, and uh, he came up to me, and I, I looked at him. I said, I don't, speak, I don't speak Spanish. I said that in English, and he looked at me. He said, Speeding, speeding, muy fast, muy fast. And I said, um, I don't think so. And he said, school zone, school zone. And I said, I, I, I wasn't speeding. And uh, then he said, $20, $20. Well, I was scared. I got out of the car. Betty was crying. The kids were crying. What's going to happen? And I went back in the back and I talked to him. And you know what I did? I gave him $20. That's what I did. And I got in the car and I later drove all the way into Querétaro. And once I learned a little bit of language and my friend that I told you about helped me so much, 
He told me the fine on that would have probably been $2 if I had been speeding. And it, it was just my first encounter with getting bribed in Mexico by a policeman. I'm just telling you all this story so you understand. You know, when you go to the mission field, you're terrified. Don't, don't be terrified. The Lord is your shepherd. He'll go with you. He'll take care of you. And I know you may have heard a lot of horror stories, but sometimes I think missionaries like to tell those stories so you'll think of them as a hero or a victim. Not true. I've lived now overseas and traveled overseas many, many times. And I have found that people over there are just like people over here. I often tell people, if you appeal folks, they all look the same. If you appeal us, we're just all the same. You know, we may speak a different language. We may have a different skin color. Uh, we may come from a different country and have some different culture, uh, cultures and stuff. But people are people. So just love people and go do the work. And don't let anybody scare you. I have loved serving God as a missionary. My family has loved it. My son, David, is still in Peru. And I want to thank you so much for all you do to get the gospel around the world. God bless every one of you.